So as more super ships release into the game, it seems like more and more there's a clear divide between the insane OP super ships and just the mediocre ones that would definitely fit in as tier 11s. Condi is definitely on the OP side, and this game is going to be absolutely amazing, although I start off really poorly. My idea here, just so you're understanding the thought process, is to stop here, try and help out on the DD fight that's happening in the middle, or that I thought might happen in the middle with these buffs. Keep in mind, this is arms race, which is honestly perfect for the Condi. The absolute strength of this ship is going to be shown in an arms race game. It's just insane how good it is at farming and delivering alpha strikes. But first, we do get caught by the destroyer. When I got spotted, I thought it might be a DD coming mid to deal with our Yamagiri in the middle, and unfortunately, it's a destroyer on the flank. So I'm forced to turn in to dodge some torpedoes. We still eat one. And of course, that leaves us broadside for, yeah, quite a bit of damage. So we're down to half HP. But that's not too bad in an arms race game. And honestly, I'm glad that I got hit that hard since it reinforces in my head that I shouldn't be playing at least that way. It's too aggressive to not have scouting on the 1-2 line and remain bow in where I was, which then forced me to turn out broadside into torpedoes. It's good ways to learn how to position is to be punished pretty hardly by the game. At least we didn't lose all of our HP. So now we get to farm all these ships as they push in. I should have also been keeping an eye out for the minimap. That's something you want to watch out for is where does the enemy middle ships go? Our middle ships, those guys that spawned towards the middle of the map, came out to our flank. And so did the enemy team. So we're going to have kind of an all-out slugfest here between the two major powerhouses of the enemy team. And what do we have here in Edgar? Well, we use Expert Loader to swap quicker. We use our <laughs> Reload Booster to swap even faster. And then we click our F key. And that's what happens if you do all of that at the right time. <laughs> I gotta say, Condi, for that reason, is one of my favorite ships in the game. I often talk about dispersion and how RNG can sometimes deal poorly. Um, Condi is not one of those ships. You don't really have to worry that much about RNG, especially with the armor piercing on that burst fire. It's kind of ridiculous. Unfortunately, we don't have our reload booster to recover from that burst fire. It's often a really good way to use the reload booster on the Condi. With Henry and some of the other lower tier French cruisers, you're probably used to using the reload booster when somebody uses their damage control to farm up another fire on them permanently. With Condi, this gimmick is so powerful that I think mainly using the reload boosters to just recover from the burst fire is honestly gonna be one of the best ways to use the reload booster. That said, I do still use it to try and farm out some of those permanent fires. You're also gonna notice throughout the game, like most matches I play with a reload booster, I save them far too much. Maybe this is happening to you as well. It gets to the late game and you have several reload boosters available to you. That just means that you need to use your reload boosters more often. It's basically free damage for you. Um, in a situation like this against an Ohio, we could think about using armor piercing, using the gimmick, that kind of thing. But honestly, the HE does so much damage that I'm pretty okay with just farming away with the high explosive. It's kind of insane how good the AP and the HE is on this Condi. So if you're looking at some of these new super ships that are coming into the game, the Russian battleship, the Japanese carrier, those two are the ones that have just recently been shown off. Um, I haven't played the carrier yet, but it seems pretty strong as well. Um, Condi should definitely be on your list of super ships to get if you're interested at playing this super ship tier. Keep in mind, if you don't have a very good game, you're not running premium account, uh, it's going to be very expensive to run these super ships. Um, 7,000 HE salvo, like, it's actually insane how much the HE is doing. And as you can see, I used the reload booster there just for the damage. I wasn't even worried about permanent fires or anything like that. I used it to just get more of those meaty HE salvos out. Now that we've mostly dealt with this flank, I talk about this a lot in my videos. We don't want to push through into the enemy spawn. That's a great way to get caught in a crossfire. Sure, this Soyuz is probably going to go down, but that Schlieffen kiting away to the 
baseline, right, is going to provide crossfires once the enemy team gets control of mid. Because there's no way we're holding on to the 8, 9, 10 lines. Our guys are kiting away. So as soon as we try and overcommit into the south of the map, the Bargon, the Alaska, they come back and we're stuck in a crossfire. So it's really, really bad. We want to go cut across the map and meet them in the middle of the map. This is also a good thing in arms race because the central zone appears in a minute, as you can see. And that's a very easy way to lose games in arms race is just ignore the central zone. The enemy team gets control of it and they win extremely quickly. We've already done a nice 133k, and I wouldn't really want to throw away this game. It's nice and close still. I think that either team really could be winning this game, especially considering the enemy team is going to be taking control of the 8, 9, 10 lines and probably getting a couple more kills. So I want to go back there and support my teammates just to talk about some of the thought process on repositioning. Fortunately, Condi is also insanely fast. Um, if I were to decide on what super ships I would like to get, which ones I would like to keep, considering I've played most of them outside of the uh, super carriers, I think that the Condi is definitely the best cruiser. Um, Annapolis is very interesting as well. I didn't really enjoy Edgar personally, although I'm not a, much of a Minotaur player. That's probably why. Um, battleships wise, it's just Satsuma. <laughs> I really think so. Uh, the other ones are all reasonably okay and they can have decent games, but Satsuma is just so much better than all the rest. Uh, that's really the one to get. And then Destroyers, I don't really know though. Again, those I haven't played a ton of. Yamagiri seems kind of interesting, being a Shimakaze that can swap between the 20s and the 12s whenever it wants to. Um, and Zorki is just an awesome uh, damage farmer. So pretty solid options. And as we get more of these super ships in the games, I'm sure we're gonna have more OP ones and more kind of dud ones. So keep that in mind if you're looking to buy some of these super ships. And I don't mean in the auctions where you're just gonna pay an exorbitant amount of credits in the auctions. Uh, I mean, just as normal ships that you buy, they're around 50 million credits each just to get normally and the repair costs are pretty insane. So you probably want to play the better ones or the ones that match your playstyle. And I think Condi is one that even if it doesn't match your playstyle, it's just so good. I think I think it's really amazing. I find the Henry a bit clumsy to use. I find it a little bit cum yeah, just cumbersome to use a lot of the time. It's big. It's easy to hit. It's had some acceleration nerfs too, of course. Uh, but Condi feels amazing, even if I do play poorly in a lot of the early game, over-aggressing and losing a lot of my HP. But I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. What super ships are you guys seeing as worth it if you've played them? Uh, let me know which ones are your favorites. I think for me it's got to be Satsuma first, and then Condi and Annapolis are both pretty fun to play as well for me. That's 10,000 10, damage HE on the Alaska and a double fire. It's just, it's ridiculous what this thing can do. I'll show you guys the build at the end. I do have heavy HE, so that might be why we're landing a bit more meaty salvos. And that my concealment's a little worse. Perhaps I should be playing around with my build a little bit more, favoring some more concealment. That way I don't get myself into some of those bad positions early on. Uh, but even as this Alaska pushes forward, use my reload booster I think here um, unfortunately I think he does actually go dark here so a bit of a waste but we can still try and blind fire um, and wow another double permanent fire <laughs> that's the thing about Condi Henry as well to a certain extent the fire chance is so insane that there's not a lot of RNG to worry about when you're farming a battleship or a super cruiser or something like that uh, but now that everything's gone dark, as you can see, I've repositioned here. It took me a little while to do that um, because I knew the Borgon was pushing across the cap here. And he's stuck in a crossfire now between Schlieffen, Condi. Um, it's not looking good for him. And yeah, we were able to bounce his AP there. <laughs> oh, that's got to feel pretty bad. Uh, and you're going to see just how good this AP is on broadsides. It's not bad. Uh, assuming you get the dispersion to hit in the right spots, that's where, of course, this special gimmick. There we go, we finally get a good salvo. But some of these HE salvos actually rival the uh, the armor piercing sometimes, which is kind of funny. Uh, 250k or so, and uh, let's see if we can sneak up on this last remaining Edgar. And yeah, 
We dove struck both Edgars in this game. <laughs> 290k arms race of course so we got to add that qualifier but still an absolutely bonkers condi game or maybe not maybe it's a standard condi game uh you guys decide on that one but i gotta say super ships can be a lot of fun um maybe it's just because they're a little overpowered and overtuned that it sometimes feels good to just stomp all over everything <laughs> So because of misplays like the uh, beginning of this match, I don't go full uh, lighthouse build where you take no concealment and that way you're maximizing top grade gunner value. Uh, but I still do take heavy HE and sap to, which, you know, isn't great for the concealment, but again, we're getting reload out of it. And on a Condi where we just wanna farm things, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so this is the build that I've been running with for now. Might switch it up in a little bit. As you can see, well, not even 30,000 XP on the Condi. So I'm still pretty early on in the number of games with Condi. Uh, I don't tend to play it all that often, but today I just happen to have a really amazing game that I wanted to show you. And again, main battery mod three. I have talked, I think in the past about running range mod. That just feels bad, honestly. I wanna be running reload mod. I wanna be getting in people's faces somewhat uh and trying to do as much damage as possible so that is the upgrades here if you go full lighthouse you get steering gears mod 2 giving you better maneuverability so there are some trade-offs here for running the concealment build it's a bit of a clumsy ship sometimes although if you're playing into the right situations it's gonna be absolutely amazing so thank you very much for watching this video and i hope you have a great rest of your day